One of the main reasons I find that teachers and students avoid OBS Studio is because the settings menu can look a little bit daunting. And there are a lot of settings, but I'm going to show you that you don't have to change many of them. It's safe to leave a lot of these to the default, but I'll also explain what each menu does, so hopefully it's not as intimidating. So you would click setting, and it starts with general. You can change your English depending on how you, you download it or your language, mine is English. We can go ahead and change the theme. It doesn't matter for performance, but a lot of my students prefer being able to customize their interface. And then a lot of these are self-explanatory. Checking for auto updates on startup. I could have the open the statistics dialog. And then for your own information, there's a lot of settings where you can go ahead and get confirmation when you're recording or when you stop recording. Most of these I don't use, but if you want to make sure that it's connecting or that it's stopped, this might be helpful. Now, source alignment. This is when you're going ahead and you're using your mouse, when it's going to snap to these features so you can adjust your mouse sensitivity. You can also hide your mouse when you're looking at different objects. You could show or not show your system tray. And that's going to be down here. And then a lot of these other ones are your preview or importer. So if you know a scene collection you're importing into this to use, you could go ahead and click that as well. And I find that's for the people who really do a lot of that customization in this program. So we can go ahead and also put it in studio mode. So we could go ahead and add transitions. If you remember when I was clicking before, you weren't really seeing transitions or anything. You were just seeing it flip from one to the other. But I could add some simple transitions. I tend to not because if I want to add those, I'll go ahead and put those in when I do post-production in a video editor, but you may prefer to use that. And same with multi-view. You can go ahead and do picture in picture. You can switch between scenes. So there's a lot of options here that you can change. I can have eight, 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 and we can even do up to 24 scenes. So for streaming, ideally you would connect your account to OBS and you could do Twitch. You could also do YouTube and a number of other ones. And then let's say I wanted to connect it to my YouTube. I could go ahead and use the ingest server. I could go ahead and get a stream key from them. If I go to Twitch, you'll see that I can actually directly log into Twitch. So if I connect account, I go ahead and I get my Twitch account here to log into. So there's a number of different ways you can connect this to a streaming service. And then from here, you can also look at output. Now this is incredibly important. A lot of versions of OBS, especially if you get one older, default to an FLV in this recording format. You do not want FLV, that's flash video, as you all know, that's going away. I prefer MP4 because that's going to record given the H.264 codex. If you don't know, that's the fancy way, the proper way to call video that's made to be the default that the internet recognizes. It's actually an MP4 and the encoding that video uses is H.264. So this will make those videos if you change this recording format to MP4. You can also browse here and set a folder for all your videos to save into. If you want, it'll generate file names without spaces. You can unclick that if you want spaces in your file name. I tend to prefer not to have them only because older computers used to have trouble reading them. And then for your different encoder, I leave it on the hardware. But if you are video savvy, you can click through and change your encoder here. If you don't know how to do that, just go ahead and change this recording format to MP4 and leave everything else alone. If you do know how to change all of this, you can go ahead and adjust your video bit rate, your audio bit rate, depending on your knowledge. For audio, this you want to set up as well, but once again, a lot of it's going to be default. I've got my desktop audio speaker. If I have a second one, I can plug that in. And this is the customization I made. I hooked up a blue snowball microphone. Yep, a blue snowball. And so I can use that. I could click through here 
and change it. If I wanted to use the microphone on my computer, I know that that one's called my Realtek High Definition Audio. I am not going to change that in midstream or mid recording. So I'm going to click off that for a second and get OBS right back. And then if I wanted other audio sources, I could put those in as well. My decay rate is going to be fast. So that's just going to be the default. I'm fine with that. Once again, if you know more about audio processing, you can change these. Once again, I leave this, the, mo yeah, the monitoring device to default as well, but I could choose just the output so that I can hear how it sounds. And maybe if I was doing a recording where I also wanted to hear myself in the headphones, I could do that. I generally, however, trust my sound bars right here. If you notice on your mic auxiliary, I can see that it's staying below the red, so I'm good. From here, I could set my hotkeys and then I go to video. Now, most of the video settings are actually set in output. This is where you can customize that. You could set the size. You could set how you want it to scale up and down. Once again, this is a window you can leave alone if you are not experienced with video. Same with hotkeys. You could customize every hotkey in this program if you wanted, but you don't have to. Now advanced. Once again, if you are not familiar with video editing, this is an area I would not mess with. But if you want it, like you know the stream's going to cancel and you want it to automatically reconnect, you can set how often you want that to try. Same for a stream delay. If you want your stream to be delayed a little bit from where you're recording it, you could set that. And then you can also change your file format name here. So right now, said it's set for my year, month, day, hour, minute, second. And I could set it to automatically override. Yep. And I could change this to remix to an MP4 if I wanted. So these are all the areas you have to change in settings. And then once you've done that, if you've hooked it up for streaming, you can start streaming. And if you want it to record, you hit start record. I'm finished, so I'm going to head and hit stop record. So thank you.